Well, hello and happy Monday morning, everybody. Uncle Mike here. Wanted to do a quick video on some of my salvage yard finds. So I did go to the local salvage yard, which takes in metal, autos. They also have an area where you can, for free, dump computers. Not monitors, because you got to pay to get rid of those, but actual um, computer systems, components and full systems. And I like to go there because the prices are right for the scrap. And a lot of the components are usually working. And I can usually find things that I'm just not going to find anywhere else. I'm not big on buying any items off of eBay. I feel that at times it's a bit overpriced. Um, and then it's a pain if anything isn't working. So um, I went there and today actually um, I got a really good selection of items. I just want to go through a few of these. I'm, I am going to get them cleaned up. And they will be included in future videos. So, first off, I have a slot one motherboard here, and I was trying to find the make on this motherboard. I really didn't look at all of these. This was the best looking of the two slot one motherboards that were available there. And I'm going to have to do some research on this. Looks like there is a motherboard number here, PB... Uh, 724-997-02. It might be an FIC motherboard. Um, I did encounter a bunch of those lately. Um, it's in really good condition. It does have a fanless, but with a large heat sink, uh, Pentium 3 450. Um, it did come with a stick of memory. Let's see, what do we got here as far as the memory? And it's PC100 and it's one stick. It's probably like 64 megs. We'll see if I'm right. And it does have a legacy ISA slot, which I really like. And it does have an AGP, probably AGP Type 1. And then, of course, it does have 5 PCI. It does have built-in Creative Labs sound chip. Let's see. It's got a built-in ES1373. Forgive me. I am severely nearsighted. I'm working contacts today. So it's got that. It's got all the headers on the motherboard. Additionally, there was a second motherboard. It was an Intel motherboard, but I didn't like the design or the layout. And it did have a very dusty, but what looks like operable Pentium 3 500. So that's two Pentium 3 slot ones today. Now, I did also find in another system an Intel i5. And that's an i5-3470, which does have integrated graphics. This might be slightly better than the i5 I'm actually using for my video editing computer. So I might be upgrading the CPU. I did find some throwaway video cards. I wasn't 100% what this one was because I did have my phone with me. I should have known better. It's a TNT Vanta. Um, just a throwaway, worthless AGP. OEM card basically. I picked up this and this is an FX 5200 AGP, excuse me, PCI card. Um, it looks like it might have a full 128 memory on it. Um, and it says it's a FX 5200 plus. So we'll see what that means. It might be slightly higher clocked. I really liked the looks of this heatsink and fan combo. That's sort of the main reason why I picked it up. Plus, you know it works, and I'm, I want to give it a good home. This is the creme de la creme for the day. Um, this is an Insonic Voodoo Banshee, 16 meg. Excellent condition. Dusty as heck, mind you. But it came out of a system that was in really good shape. Actually, it came out of this system. Really good shape. It was in the slot. And I do not have a Voodoo Banshee. Hopefully this works. Um, you know, I know the Voodoo Banshee is positioned between the original Voodoo and the Voodoo 2. But it does have the 2D, 3D capabilities. And paired with something like a low-end P3, it actually shouldn't do a half-bad job in most titles. Except, except Quake 2. It's not going to do exceptionally well. But we'll also pair it with some higher clock P3s just to see how it winds up working, just to top it off. For my test bench, I've been needing a throwaway P3 
power supply. And this power supply also came out of our slot one motherboard system. And it's just a generic code gen, whatever that is, 300 watt power supply. Um, it has the right connectors and I needed a throwaway power supply so I can do some test benching. That'll go right in here. I've already got a, you know, I've already got a three and a half inch floppy and then I have a, uh, you know, a DVD drive. So I want to do some benchmarking. And one of, one of the first things I want to throw on the test bench when I get it inside is this. This is also a heck of a find. I don't know if it works. Um, I'll show you how awkward the layout is in a moment, but basically this is out of an AST system and it's a slot three 486 AMD Cyrex motherboard. I've been needing a good home for my 486 chips and my AMD chip and my Cyrex chip and my Pentium Overdrive chip ever since I had issues upgrading the memory and the tag RAM on my existing 486 VLB motherboard, um, it's not working. And finding a video card for that old motherboard has been problematic. However, this thing has integrated PCI Cirrus Logic video. It's upgradable, but it does come with one meg. I did a little bit of research on what I could find on this bad boy. It does have integrated IDE and floppy, and it has a Phoenix. PCI 46 motherboard BIOS. Um, I have high hopes for this system. PS2 connectors. Um, looks like one of the last of the 486 type motherboards. Now, the reason this is problematic though is all of the expansions are on this riser card. And I don't have a case that really fits this. But again, I am going to just test bench it. Now, the fun thing about this riser card is it has three 16-bit ISA slots, but it has integrated sound. So the back half of this riser card is integrated sound with a breakout. Just, I've never seen anything like it. I know it's an integrated system. I know it's a higher-end AST system from that age. Um, you know, Circa... 1996 ish and when i put it all together i think i'm going to have fun with this assuming that my dallas clock chip still works i don't want to have to replace that i hope it's still working there's a chance and then i have to get rid of this piece of metal here but you know a little cleanup and i think this thing might be good to go and the other good thing is all of the jumpers are very well silk screened on this motherboard so just about anything I need to know about this motherboard is silk screened on it so it being a 486 it's unlikely I have to worry about drivers for the Cirrus logic and everything should just work and it doesn't look like it has any cache memory on it but based on my experience trying to source cache tag rams for my other motherboard I might just leave well enough alone so there you have it, folks, um, my junkyard finds. Um, I spent $40 on these items, and if everything were to work, you know, the Voodoo card alone, if I were to sell it on eBay, I could get anywhere from 60 to 80 bucks. This is worthless, this is worthless. You're probably talking 10 bucks for this, maybe five bucks for this. Wouldn't even be worth shipping it. This motherboard, if it's working with the riser, and if everything's working and with a decent chip in it, it could go anywhere from 100 to 200 bucks, from what I've seen. All right. Um, this motherboard, once I figure out what it is and I figure out that it's working, you know, it might bring in an additional 50 to 100 dollars. So, I think all in all, a pretty good day. I do intend to keep these items, but again, I just wanted to share my junkyard finds, and hopefully, we'll get them cleaned up and we'll get them tested. Thanks for joining us.